In the meantime, in April 2002, a stitch along the left side of my abdomen suddenly graduated into an aching throb. I'd turned 51 in late March and was just beginning to get my feet underneath me again after James's death. Life after 9-11 was quite a bit easier to cope with for me by comparison. I had tenure as a lit and writing professor, my second marriage was flourishing, and my book about poker was scheduled to be published the following March. While making final revisions to the book and teaching my literature and science of poker class, I felt pretty good about things, as long as you didn't count the abscess in my soul where my son lived. But within a couple of days, the thorn in my side, as I thought of it, had me walking hunched over like a little old man with bad knees and end-stage cirrhosis, not exactly the image I like to project to the world. I much prefer to swagger from success to success like a book-learnt but still macho cowboy. Bow-legged, big-cocked, in saddle-worn denim, denim not broken in or sandblasted ahead of time by underpaid foreigners. As the throbbing intensified, I gulped down more Advil and prayed, I mean, worried. I'd been taking Zocor, which helped lower my elevated bad cholesterol, for almost two years, this while neglecting to get my liver function tested. Lynn Martin, my primary care physician, had told me to have it checked after three months on the statin because the possible side effects included nephritis and liver damage, but I somehow forgot. I knew I'd been drinking too much and dosing myself far too liberally with Advil for headaches and hangovers, so my self-diagnosis was liver failure though the phrase I used with my wife Jennifer was, some liver thing. Scared by the fatal possibilities, but also of hearing them confirmed by Dr. Martin, I finally, at Jennifer's insistence, made an appointment at our HMO's lab to have my liver enzymes tested. I also stopped drinking, not unheroically, I decided, and, in spite of the crippling pain, as I phrased it to myself, stopped taking Advil, even though I understood the damage was already done. Oh, and another thing, Braino, Jennifer said after kissing me, wishing me luck and dropping me off at the lab. Your liver's on your right side, not on your left. Dr. Martin was booked or on vacation, and the first appointment I could get was with her partner, Dennis Hughes. Tallish, maybe 40, all business, Hughes glanced at the blood test results, felt around where I had told him it hurt, asked a few questions, and told me I probably had diverticulitis. Your liver is functioning perfectly. On the crinkled foot-wide sheet of sanitary paper I'd just been sitting on, he sketched a penisless outline of his patient that featured instead a detailed blow-up of my large intestine, complete with hairpin turns and what looked to be wormholes mottling the inner walls. Diverticulosis, quite common in people your age. What the hell was that supposed to mean? As I stood there, squinting down at my elderly intestines, Hughes continued... When a seed or food particle gets trapped in one of the holes and becomes infected, it's called diverticulitis. I nodded. Diverticulitis, I couldn't help thinking, as the little old woman from Brooklyn used to funnily pronounce it on Letterman. And now here I was, in my unfunny new demographic. Hughes emailed scripts for painkillers and antibiotics to my Walgreens and secured me an appointment for a CT scan of my abdomen, which would confirm his diagnosis. The colonoscopy two weeks later will confirm that it's all healed up nicely. I nodded. Had I missed something? The practice had just been computerized, and Hughes was happy to demonstrate how my records, medications, new prescriptions, CT appointment, and so on were all in the system, the referrals for your scan and colonoscopy are already at Evanston Hospital. Terrific. The antibiotics killed the infection, or at least the symptoms, in a couple of days, so I was able to squirrel the unused painkillers into my party stash. When I called in to report the good news, a nurse reminded me I still needed to get a colonoscopy, just to make sure. Dr. Martin says you needed to get one anyway. I'll make the appointment soon as I hang up, I told her, then sat down to breakfast. All better.